Hey everybody, this video is going to be an overview of all of the different The moment you first load into Hyperscape, it does put you in this little training range or tutorial area. However, I do realize that not everybody has access to the game yet. And so during my time in early access, I essentially decided, hey, I should just record a quick bit of me going through all the weapons and all the abilities and my thoughts on them. So that way people could see what the game is actually like. So first up, we have the wall. The wall is very straightforward. It indeed creates a wall, but not just any wall because it's actually really freaking massive. It's also on a fairly short cooldown. A fully upgraded wall just has an even faster cooldown. It doesn't get more HP. This wall is in fact breakable. And additionally, you can create walls on top of walls where you could just go build straight to the skybox if you wanted. Second, we have the mine. The mine is a ranged cast. You can actually cast it next to an opponent and then after about one second, it'll fly at them. It does 50 damage base. Each character in this game has 120 HP, which means a fully upgraded mine does just over half your health pool, which is pretty intense. Next up is invisibility. Invis in this game is a perfect invisibility, which means no one can see you. However, they can damage you through it, so you still have to be a little bit careful. The cooldown is fairly short. Additionally, I believe you can attack directly out of an invisibility, so you can use it to essentially sneak attack up on somebody. Although I don't think I show it in this section. Next up is the counter to invisibility and some other stuff, which is reveal. Reveal is exactly what you think it is. It shows people through walls within a square. So you do actually have to aim at them. It's not something you can just, oh, I'm going to pop this as I walk up to a building. Its main use is to counter invisibility users because people who grab invisibility and some of the other skills get really obnoxious when they start chaining it. Imagine someone using wall plus invisibility, for example, where they just invis and they get close and they wall, and then you break down the wall, but they're invisible. Stuff like that reveal really helps with. Next up is heal. Heal just puts a giant AOE heal pad on the ground. This is breakable by the enemy player. And I don't know how much it heals for because it's actually not possible to damage yourself in the testing or in the training range. So it's, I want to say it's pretty good though. Like it'll absolutely help versus poke damage and the cooldown is slow enough or fast enough that it's easy to drop down another one if it does break. Armor is a pretty unique skill. Armor is not just armor. It actually makes you straight up invulnerable for the duration. You think of it almost as a block, except if you hold it, you're actually just straight up invulnerable for the entire duration, which is super obnoxious. And I, I totally anticipate them to patch this. Someone popping armor then running away in a straight line is just straight up invulnerability for like half their life. Next, we're going to get into ball. These are the mobility skills. And then the mobility skills are where this game gets truly crazy. Ball in particular is a little bit unique. If you hold space bar, you will always go up with each subsequent bounce, even if you're on a flat surface. However, if you let go of space, it'll make a different sound. It sounds a little bit more sad, but then you just get bounce further and further down. This allows you to scale buildings and go up and down in height as you please. And a fully upgraded ball doesn't do anything except change the cooldown rate of the ball. And the ball does have health. The enemy players can break it. Next up is teleport. The only thing you get at upgrading teleport is cooldown speed, but teleport is just exactly what it does. It teleports in the direction you are facing. It also keeps some form of momentum. A fully upgraded teleport is on a seven second cooldown, I believe. <laughs> and it's very, very good for in combat use because obviously you can juke behind people and whatnot. Next one is Slam. Slam is one of the best mobility skills because it is both mobility and damage. If you land on somebody, as you saw right there, it is 30 damage, which is one quarter of someone's HP. And a fully upgraded Slam does even more than that. I think the previous one was 30 and that one does 45. So fully upgraded Slam does 50% more damage than level one Slam. It's great for scaling buildings as well as dropping on unsuspecting enemies because it allows you to do a huge crap ton of burst damage with a skill. And having mobility and damage in a single skill is very, very convenient. Okay, now to the fun stuff. Let's talk guns. First gun we're going to look at is the shotgun. Shotgun is pretty straightforward. It is a pump shotgun. It has a deceptively... Uh, how do you put this? It has a deceptively slow cast speed or attack speed. Like, you cannot attack very fast with the shotgun. It is tough. It also doesn't seem as if it really changes that much between ADS and non-ADS, or if there is, then I can't really notice. The second gun we'll be looking at is the pistol, which is sort of like a wingman from Apex. The problem is with this gun, if you haven't noticed already from shooting it, is that it changes your FOV with a little FOV aim punch effect every time you shoot it, which kind of makes me nauseous. The revolver pistol in non-ADS mode actually does have a little bit of inaccuracy. 
so you are encouraged to ADS, and I'm a little bit curious if the FOV punch effect is their way of encouraging you to ADS. The next gun is sort of like a smart pistol from Titanfall. It is an automatic aiming pistol. Honestly, it seems kind of like a troll gun. I've never actually seen anyone use this and kill anyone, but it exists out there for some niche use and maybe fully upgraded it could start shredding. It's probably a good finisher, honestly. Next up, we have explosive weaponry. The first one is called the Skybreaker. It's pretty much a, a one-shot rocket launcher. Not that it actually one-shots, obviously, but that you can only shoot once before you have to reload. What's special about it is each upgrade actually progressively increases the damage to the point where it does, I believe, 60 in an AoE. 60, of course, is half a player's health pool, which means if you catch a team by surprise and drop a Skybreaker on them if, and then swap to another gun to finish, you can get some insane burst damage. It is super strong with corner peeking, especially. Uh, the Salvo is a bouncy grenade launcher that explodes when it touches a player. However, it doesn't really have to be strictly touching the player because the explosive hitbox in this game seems to be literally double a player's size. So it, in other words, if it just goes near them, it'll blow up. And for this gun, it does 31 damage fully upgraded, which means if you hit them four times with a fully upgraded bouncy grenade launcher, it'll kill them. The AOE is super strong, particularly indoors, and you can see the juggle effect as it moves them around, which is much more pro obvious on the next gun, which is the Komodo. The Komodo is also a grenade launcher, but as you can see, it actually blows up on impact, which means you don't have to be as precise with it because you can just shoot the ground next to them and juggle them in corners, and it's super obnoxious to deal with because it's really easy to combo with. Let's say you hit them with the Skybreaker, then you swap to the Komodo and just chain juggle them. It's super strong indoors, it's super strong everywhere. It is very, very annoying to play against. Uh, next up, we have the Sniper Rifle, otherwise known as the Protocol V. The sniper Rifle is probably the most overpowered gun in the game, in my opinion, if you are a good player, because as anyone who plays a Battle Royale knows, hit scan snipers should not be a thing. And this hit scan sniper, when fully upgraded, one shots on headshots. It is a super obnoxious to play against, and if you're a good player abusing this protocol, aka the Sniper Rifle, it is super, super strong. One of the most annoying loadouts are players who use both the Sniper Rifle and the Komodo from earlier. The Grenade Launcher explodes on impact. A very powerful combo, as well as this one, actually, the Hex Fire. The Hex Fire is the minigun. Super strong close-up. What's a little bit interesting is there seems to be a little bit of a flinch effect when you headshot a player. Their head actually goes backwards to the point where it prevents further headshots in a lot of cases, unless you're aiming a little bit low, like the neck. And so from my own personal experience, it feels like it's better to aim either just always at the neck or just upper chest with things like the Hexfire. The Hexfire does get more accurate when you ADS and it's super, super good close range. The Ripper is the generic assault rifle in this game. The problem I have with the Ripper is one that, as you saw right there, the flinch effect kind of pre prevents further headshots. It is more accurate than the Hexfire, AKA the minigun. The problem is, so many fights in this game due to the high levels of mobility given by the mobility skills are either close range or really long range. And in either of those cases, you probably want just the hex fire, aka the minigun or the sniper rifle. This gun is in an awkward middle ground, which means it's, it's still not bad. It's just in a lot of situations, not going to be as good as the alternatives. But as you can see, it still shreds. Like if you hit all your shots, it still shreds. Overall, I think that pretty much sums it up. As you can see, this is the last part of the training range where they show you, hey, you can actually break boxes and these glass doors slash windows. I actually skipped this part of the tutorial and it took me two or three games to figure that out. Don't be like me. Just break them, dude. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Have a great time playing the game. Thanks for watching. Peace.